Hello friends, welcome. I am Dr. Harvinder Singh. Welcome to our next video podcast. And topic for today is basics of lithium formulations and serum lithium level. We all know how important and efficient lithium is. One of the most important, or I should say gold standard mood stabilizer for bipolar disorder. So in this podcast, I will talk about very basic. This is a very short video podcast, but very briefly, I will mention that this is available for our course subscribers and also for our YouTube channel subscribers. I will place the link below. But for course subscribers, you can find this video podcast and chapter in our therapeutic drug monitoring section. So without wasting any time, let's begin our podcast for today. So let's begin. The podcast is lithium formulation and serum level. And I will talk or discuss this podcast in these four important sections. First is available lithium formulations and dosages available. Difference between lithium citrate and lithium carbonate and what dosage you can use to convert them and which lithium formulation and dosing is preferred. And fourth is serum lithium level in bipolar disorder and here we will talk about what is the minimum efficacious serum lithium level for long-term treatment of bipolar disorder what serum lithium level is known for optimal treatment response and how much reduction in lithium level can increase the risk of relapse in a patient with bipolar disorder so let's begin with section number one, which is available lithium formulations and dosages. So lithium actually is available in three formulations. Two are oral, actually all three are oral formulations. The first one is a capsule formulation of lithium carbonate. This has the most uh, available options in terms of 150 milligram, 300 milligram, and 600 milligram. Please note that 150 is the lowest available formulation and it is available only for lithium carbonate capsules. The second one is the extended release formulation of lithium, which is the longer acting form of lithium. And there are only two dosages available, 300 and 450 milligram. And the last one is a liquid formulation, lithium syrup. It's a lithium citrate formulation. And it comes in 300 milli equivalent for every 5 ml. So let's begin with comparing lithium citrate with lithium carbonate. And that is our section number two here in this podcast. So basic thing is that 8 milli equivalent of lithium citrate syrup is equal to 300 milligram of lithium carbonate. What that means is if you are starting your patient on 600 milligram of lithium carbonate, which is very common starting dose for lithium, you need to start 16 milli equivalent of lithium citrate syrup in those patients. Uh, I use this dosage especially on an inpatient psych unit where medication compliance is very vital. So you can use this formulation to enhance the compliance. And the studies have shown the comparison of lithium carbonate with lithium citrate. I will just show you this table which compare the half-life, T-half, T-max, and volume of distribution for these two dosages of lithium carbonate, 300 milligram, and lithium citrate, 8 milli equivalents. You can see they are very comparable. So this is the conversion dosage that you need to know 
when you decide to initiate or convert these medications with each other. Now the third section here is very important one I think which is which lithium formulation should I use and what dosing is preferred? So the brief answer is use the extended release formulation over immediate release formulation and I'll talk about why is that in one minute. But what other factors are important? Regarding dosing, rather than using twice daily, thrice daily dosing, prefer once a day dosing. This is much better for kidneys in terms of renal concentration. Once a day dosing is known to be better, uh, not only for short treatment, but for long term treatment with lithium. And third is keeping a person on a lower therapeutic lithium level. What that means is if a person was admitted and needed higher doses for management of acute manic episode with time, with treatment, look for lower therapeutic lithium level for long term use, better from renal standpoint. So these are the three important fact, clinical fact that you need to implement with your patients. Now let's talk very briefly about the first one that we said about extended release formulations. What are the exact benefits of using extended release lithium formulation? And these are the one. The study that I quoted below published in 2016 mentioned that using extended release formulation is known to have consistent serum lithium concentration compared to the immediate release formulation and extended release formulation is known to have fewer adverse event very important point again and last is when you give your patient once a day formulation which is the extended release one there is more chances of adherence and thereby compliance and thereby less risk of mood destabilization and related consequences. So lesson here is prefer extended release formulation if you can in your patients. Now the last part in this podcast which is section number four I will talk about serum lithium level. We all know what are the therapeutic level so I will not go into details of that but I will talk about some important clinical facts here. Let's start with number one. What is the minimum efficacious serum lithium level in a long-term treatment? We are not talking about acute management, but for, but for maintenance management of bipolar disorder. And the studies have shown it's actually 0.4. You know, we, uh, we know the therapeutic range is 0.6 to 1.2, but studies have shown at least 0.4 is needed for long-term maintenance treatment of bipolar disorder with good response. And the other thing is, what is the op optimal level or what is the level for optimal response when you start treating your patients? This is the level between 0.6 to 0.75. An interesting fact is, let's say a serum level dropped after what drop in serum level, your patient is at increased risk of relapse. And that is this. If your patient had an abrupt reduction in serum level of more than 0.2, they are at increased risk of relapse into mania or depression or mixed episode of bipolar. How, so for now, we talked about 0 0.4, 0 0.6 to 0.75 level. What about serum lithium level greater than 0.75? What are the benefits, if any? Well, they found no additional protection against overall morbidity, but they found improved control in terms of inter-episode manic symptom. What that means is less, level more than 0.75 will prevent future episodes of mood destabilization. So last thing I will talk here is 
is there any relation of using lithium dosages and changes in lithium level? What I mean is, if your patient is let's say stable on 600 or let's say you started somebody on 600 milligram daily dosing of lithium and the levels are let's say 0.5 or 0.6 uh, or 0.5 or 0.4, how much levels are likely to rise with addition of additional lithium. So this is what I found, that if you add 300 milligram or eight milliequivalent of the liquid form, it will rise the lithium level with an average of 0.2 to 0.4, whereas if you add 600 milligram, which is 16 milliequivalent, it will rise the level by 0.3 to 0.6. Very important point to prevent lithium toxicity. So you can use these numbers, but be mindful that every person is different. The increase of levels will be different based on the person's profile. So this was our podcast for today. Thank you again. If you have not subscribed already, please do subscribe to our Physician's Guide for Clinical Psychiatry course. This podcast is actually a part of a chapter in our Therapeutic Drug Monitoring series, chapter series. And also, this is our social media platform for Psychiatry Education Forum website. Please do like us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, do not hesitate. Contact me on this email. Thank you, friends. Thanks again for listening. You all have a good day. Take care. Bye.